Welcome everybody. Let's talk about how we're going to calculate the pH of a weak base solution. It's important to recognize that weak bases are only going to dissociate slightly. They are going to establish an equilibrium. And so if we take a look at a generic weak base equation, this is going to be analogous to what we were doing for weak acids. Many of our weak bases are going to contain nitrogen atoms. That's where that lone pair is going to come from to be a proton acceptor. And so often, in order to show their action as a base, you will need to actually write the water out as opposed to something like a hydroxide, whether a group one or a group two hydroxide or some other hydroxide, where just their simple dissociation when you put them in water forms the hydroxide ion. Since this is an equilibrium, we can write an equilibrium constant expression, and we're going to call this Kb because it's for a base. And just as we had a Ka, and a pKa, we also have a pKb that follows the same mathematical relationship. And just like for an acid, if pKb is a small number, that means we have a relatively large dissociation constant. And so we will end up with a stronger base. And also if I compare the pKb for a base to the pH of the solution it's in, I can learn about whether it is mostly in its base form or mostly in its ionized form where it has gained that hydrogen to become the conjugate acid. But here we have to think carefully about what pH means compared to pKb. So pH is a measure of hydronium. pKb is talking about hydroxide. So if the pH is lower than the pKb, I have less hydroxide. And so I'm going to have more of the ionized form or of the conjugate acid form. Whereas if the pH is greater than the pKb, this means that I will have more hydroxide, and so I'll have more of the original base form. We can certainly calculate the pH for a weak base solution. The process is gonna be almost the same as for a weak acid, with one little tweak to take into account the fact that we are working with a base. So we'll start by writing our balanced association equation and our equilibrium constant expression. We'll make an ice table that's gonna allow us to solve for the hydroxide ion concentration, use approximations as needed. And then that'll allow us to calculate the pOH. And from there, we can calculate the pH. So if we wanna calculate the pH of a 0.1 molar solution of aniline, we will start by writing a dissociation equation and an expression for Kb. And then we're gonna plug the values that we know into our ice table and use x to represent the dissociation, which will be a small amount of that original concentration of aniline. From there, we can plug into the Kb expression. And then we're gonna assume, since this is a weak base and very little of it dissociates, that x will be negligible compared to the 0.1 um, of the original concentration of the aniline. And once we have taken advantage of that approximation, we have a value for x. Let's double check that it is less than 5%. And that's certainly less than 5%, so we're good with our assumption. That will allow us to determine the concentration of hydroxide ion in solution. From there, we can calculate our pOH. And the pH is simply 14 minus that pOH. Just as we did for acids, if I know the pH of a solution, I can calculate the Kb or pKb for a base. Process is very similar. We're going to write our balanced equation and a Kb expression for the base we're interested. We'll use the pH then to calculate the pOH, and from there the hydroxide ion concentration. That'll go into the ice table, allow us to determine the concentration of all chemical species at equilibrium, which can then be plugged into the Kb expression. So in this example, I have ephedrine, and I already have a balanced chemical equation for its reaction in water, where it's acting as a base. And I know that I have a pH of 11.33 in a 0.035 molar solution of the ephedrine. And so I'm going to rewrite my balanced chemical equation and my Kb expression so I can make an ice table below it. I know that before the equilibrium was established, I had an initial concentration of 0.035 molar for the ephedrine. And in that split second, no products remaining. To calculate the hydroxide ion concentration, I'm going to take that pH and turn it into pOH. That will allow me to determine the hydroxide ion concentration. And from there, I can put that information into our ice table. 
And once I have a completed ice table, I can plug those numbers into the value for KB. So we can talk about both Ka and keep KB values, Ka for an acid, KB for a base. And if we're talking about an acid and a base as a part of a conjugate base acid pair, there's actually a relationship between Ka and KB. If you turns out if you multiply Ka times KB, you'll get the value for Kw. I want to show you why this happens. If you take uh, an acid-base conjugate pair, and I'm going to use a generic acid HA here, it can dissociate to form A- and hydronium, but that A- can also then react with water to reform the acid form. So if you take the Ka and Kb and then multiply them together, we see that HA is both on the, in the numerator and the denominator, and so is A-. And so what remains is just hydronium and hydroxide. And that, by definition, is Kw, which at room temperature is 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. And so in this way, if you know Ka for an acid, you also know the Kb for its conjugate base, and vice versa. That's going to be incredibly useful and handy, so make sure you remember that relationship.